The world's birds gathered for their conference and said, Our arrangement makes no sense. All groups of creatures in the world have someone to rely on. How is it we alone have no such thing? We need a king, a bird king. We must inquire for one. They argued how to set about their quest. The hoopoe fluttered forward. On his breast, there shone the symbol of the spirit's way. Discerning, righteous and intelligent, he spoke. My purposes are heaven sent. I know our king, but how can I alone endure the journey to this distant throne? Join me, and when at last we end our quest, our king will greet you as his honored guest. How long will you persist in blasphemy? Escape your selfhood vicious tyranny. We have a king. Beyond Kef's mountain peak, the Zimarg lives, the sovereign whom you seek. And he is always near to us, though we live far from his transcendent majesty. The road is long, the sea is deep. One flies first buffed by joy and then by sighs. First, wash your hands of life. If you would say, I am a pilgrim of our sovereign's way. Renounce your soul for love. He you pursue will sacrifice his inmost soul for you. The nightingale made his excuses first. His pleading notes described the lover's thirst. The secrets of our love are known to me. My love is for the rose. I bow to her. If she should disappear, I would lose my reason and my song would fail. One being understands my heart, the rose. I am so drowned in love that I can find no thought of my existence in my mind. The hoopoe answered him, Dear Nightingale, this superficial love which makes you quail is only for the outward show of things. Prepare your wings for our great quest. Sharp thorns defend the rose. The pretty parrot was the next to speak. Clothed all in green with sugar in her beak and round her neck a circle of pure gold, she trilled, I have been caged by heartless men. My desire is to be free again. If I could reassert my liberty, I'd find the water of immortality. My thirsting soul I have no wish to seek the Simorg's throne, of which you love to speak. The hoopoe said, You are a cringing slave. This is not noble, generous, or brave. To think your being has no other end than finding water and a loyal friend. The hawk came forward with his head held high. His boasts of grand connection filled the sky. His talk was stuffed with army, glory, kings. He bragged. The ecstasy my chief brings make my eyes hooded and I cannot see. 
I perched proudly at my chief's wrist. The hoopoe said, the true king reigns in mild humility, unrivaled in his firm fidelity. The owl approached with his distracted air, hooting, abandoned ruins are my lair. A tranquil mind is only to be found away from men in wild, deserted ground. These ruins are my melancholy pleasure, not least because they harbor buried treasure. Love for the Zimorg is a childish story. My love is only for the gold. The hoopoe answered him, Besotted fool, suppose you get this gold. What could you do but guard it night and day, while life itself, unnoticed, slips away? All the other birds in turn receive their chance to show off their loquacious ignorance. All made excuses. How could they gain the Zimorg? The hoopoe counseled them. The world holds few as worthy of the Zimorg's throne as you. But you must empty this first glass. The wine that follows is love's devoted sign. When long ago the Zimorg first appeared, his face like sunlight when the clouds have cleared, he cast unnumbered shadows on the earth. On each one fixed his eyes, and each gave birth. Thus we were born. The birds of every land are still his shadows. Think and understand. If you become that substance I propound, you are not God, though in God you are drowned. Your heart is not a mirror, bright and clear, if there the Zimorg's form does not appear. No one can bear his beauty face to face, and for this reason, of his perfect grace, he makes a mirror in our hearts, look there. To see him, search your heart with anxious care. You are his shadow and cannot be moved by thoughts of life or death once this is proved. The throng set out, but clearing the first doom, their leader sent a cry up to the moon. And panic spread among the birds. They feared the endless desolation which appeared. They clung together in a huddling crowd. The hoopoe as their chief was hailed and crowned. Huge flocks of birds gathered round. A hundred thousand birds assembled there, making a monstrous shadow in the air. Before we reach our destination, the hoopoe said, the journey's seven valleys lie ahead. How far this is, the world has never learned. For no one who has gone there has returned. The birds set out.
When you begin the valley of the quest, you enter a land of uncertainty. Each moment some new trouble terrifies, years do vanish while you exert yourself and grief. Everything can change from one moment to the next. The weight of the world would break. Renounce your world, your power, and all you own. And in your heart's blood, journey on alone. When once your hands are empty, then your heart must purify itself and move apart. From everything that is, when this is done, the light of God blazes brighter as the sun. Your heart is bathed in splendor and the quest expands a thousand fold within your breast. The wanderer, driven by his desire, will like a moth rush gladly to the fire. When love inspires his heart, he begs for wine. One drop to be allowed him as a sign. When he drinks this drop, both worlds are gone. Dry-lipped, he sinks into oblivion. The gate will be opened for the one who accepts that both faith and blasphemy will appear. Beyond, none of them exist. What is faith? What is blasphemy? Both vanish into emptiness.
love's valley is the next, and her desire will plunge the pilgrim into seas of fire, until his very being is inflamed, and those whom fire rejects turn back ashamed. The lover is someone who flares and burns, whose face is fevered, who in frenzy yearns, who knows no prudence, who will gladly drown a hundred worlds in his blazing fire. Who knows of neither faith nor blasphemy? Who has no time for doubt or certainty? To whom both, good and evil, are the same? And who is neither but a living flame? But you, insensible, this word is not for you. You do not notice any of it. True lovers give up everything they own to steal one moment with the friend alone. They risk their life and risk it now until their hearts are burned. They are the fish cast upon the land that seeks to see and shudders on the sand. When love has come, the intellect has fled. It cannot teach love. If you could seek the unseen, you would find love's home, which is not reason or the mind, 
and love's intoxication tumbles down the world's designs for glory and renown. Reason's eyes will never glimpse one spark of shining love to mitigate the dark. Love leads whoever starts along the way. Love needs truthful humans. Love needs the profound. The next broad valley which the traveler sees brings insight into hidden mysteries. Here every pilgrim takes a different way and different spirits, different rules obey. Each soul and body has its level here and climbs or falls within its proper sphere. There are so many roads and each is fit for that one pilgrim who must follow it. How could a spider or a tiny ant tread the same path as a huge elephant? Our pathways differ. No bird ever knows the secret route by which another goes. Our insight comes to us by different signs. One prays in mosques and one in idol shrines. But when truth's sunlight clears the upper air, each wanderer sees that he is welcome there. His essence will shine forth. The world that seemed a furnace will be sweeter than he dreamed. The self will disappear. Then, from within, the face of the immortal friend will appear. Thank you. 
A hundred thousand secrets will be known. A hundred thousand men must faint and fail, till one shall draw aside the secret's veil. Perfected of rare courage he must be, to dive through that immense sea. Now let the sea of knowledge drown your mind, or dust and death is all that you will find. If you ignore our quest and idly sleep, you will not glimpse the friend. Rise now and weep. And if you cannot find his beauty here, seek out truth's mysteries and persevere. Next comes the Valley of Detachment. Here all claims, all lost for meaning, disappear. The seven planets seem a fading spark, the seven seas a pool, and heaven's arc is more like dust and death than paradise. The seven burning hells freeze cold as ice. More wonderful than this, a tiny ant is here far stronger than an elephant. And while a raven feeds, a caravan of countless souls will perish to a man. A hundred thousand angels wept when light shone out in Adam and dispelled the night. A hundred thousand drowning creatures died when Noah's ark rode out the rising tide. For Abraham, as many gnats were sent to humble Nimrod's vicious government. A million eyes became a sea of blood until Yusuf escaped the dungeon. Many children perished by the sword until Moses' sight was cleansed before the Lord. As many walked in willful heresy, when Jesus saw truth's hidden mystery. Many souls endured the wretched fate before Muhammad rose to heaven's gate. Here, neither old or new has any worth. It does not matter if you do or don't. If you should see the world consumed in flame, it is a dream compared to this. If thousands were to die here, there would be one drop of dew absorbed within the sea. If earth and heaven were to pass away, one grain of gravel would have gone astray. If men and fiends were never seen again, they'd vanish like a tiny slash of rain. Think that the earth has lost a single straw. And if the nine revolving heavens stop, think that the sea has lost a single drop. Detachment is a flame, a livid flash, that will reduce a hundred worlds to ash, 
its valley makes creation disappear. And if the world has gone, then where is fear? The world is gone. The self is gone. The loss is gone. Then where is fear? Next comes the valley of God's unity, place of lonely, long austerity. And all who enter on this waste have found their various necks by one tight collar bound. If you see many here, or but a few, they're one, however they appear to you. The many here are merged in one. A unit and number here have passed away. Forget forever and creation stay. That day is gone. Eternity is gone. Let them depart into oblivion. What seemed many things is only one. All things are one. There isn't any two. It isn't me who speaks, it isn't you. What seemed many things is only one. There isn't any two. It isn't me who speaks. It isn't you. To melt into God, to be one with the friend, 
That is becoming God's unity. To lose the self, and again to lose the loss, that is true separation. Next comes the Valley of Bewilderment, a place of pain and discontent. Each second you will sigh, and every breath will be a sword to make you long for death. Blinded by grief, you will not recognize the days and nights that pass before your eyes. The unity you knew has gone. Your soul is scattered and knows nothing of the whole. If God's unity lies within one's soul, he'd lost himself, knows nothing but the whole. If you would say, what is your present state? Are you, or are you not? Are you high, or are you low? Are you the center or beyond? Are you the border? Hidden or visible? Do you flourish now or fade away? Are you both? Are you one? Are you none? He will confess. Really? I don't know anymore. I doubt my doubt. Doubt itself is unsure. I love. But who is it for whom I sigh? Not Muslim, yet not heathen. What am I? My heart is full of love, but even empty.
he will confess. I cannot say. Really. I don't know anymore. I doubt my doubt. Doubt itself is unsure. I love, but who is it for whom I sigh? Not Muslim, yet not heathen. What am I? My heart is full of love, but even empty. My own love is to me incredible. Next comes the valley words cannot express. The veil of poverty and nothingness. Here you're lame and deaf, the mind is gone. When sunlight penetrates the atmosphere, a hundred thousand shadows disappear. And when the sea arises, what can save the patterns of the surface of each wave? Whoever sinks within the sea is blessed, and in self-loss obtains eternal rest. The heart that would be lost in this wide sea disperses in profound tranquility. And if it should emerge again, it knows the secret ways in which the world arose. Because all disappear, you might believe that all are equal. Twigs and incense offered to a flame, both turn to ash and look the same. But though they seem to share the same appearance now, their inward essences are separate. Evil souls sunk in this mighty sea retain unchanged their identity. If a pure soul sinks into the waves, in beauty he is drowned. He is not, yet he is. What could this mean? It is a state the mind has never seen. A lover cried blood tears one day. One came and asked him, Why do you cry? The lover said, They say that 
When tomorrow God will appear in a dream, he will hand out a lightly burden to the hands of the one who is deserving his dear grace for 40,000 years. Then from that summit of celestial grace he will return and know himself once more aware of the light he experienced, the poorest of the poor. I look through my own eyes and I am blind. With the eyes of God, myself isn't there anymore. When I will succeed in losing myself, the impossible will be the same to me as God's unity. I will be shown myself. I cry because I know now that from such heights to such depth I must sink. I have no need of my identity no more. With God both self and evil disappear. When I escape the self, I will arise and be as God. I will fly from this dark province of mortality to nothingness and to eternity. And though the restless heart has to say farewell, to cross the bridge that arches over hell, do not despair. Think of the oil lamp's glow that sends up smoke as black as the feathers of a crow. It's all has changed and what was there before? This shining flame flared up, exists no more. So you, my aching heart, when you endure these threatening flames, will rise up rare and pure. If your desire is to reach this place, you have to put aside the self. Take the horse of absence by its reins, bend forward, put on the cloak of nowhere. Tie the belt called nothing around your waist, drink down the cup of nothingness. Go beyond all knowledge until you first outsoar both flesh and soul. But should one part remain, a single hair will drag you back. No creature's self can be admitted here, where all identity must disappear. Destroy the body. Adorn your sight with coal of insubstantial darkest night. First put aside the self, lose yourself. Then lose the loss and then withdraw from all that loss again. Go peacefully and stage by stage progress until you gain the realms of nothingness.
They traveled on for years. A lifetime passed before the longed for destination was reached at last. What happened as they flew, I cannot say. Of many who set out, no trace was found. Some deep within the ocean's depths were drowned. Some died on mountain tops, some died of heat. Some flew too near the sun, their hearts on fire with love, their wings and feathers burned to ash. Some met their death between the lion's claws, and some were tripped to death by monsters' jaws. Some died of thirst, some hunger sent insane, until suicide released them from the pain. Some became weak and could no longer fly. A world of birds set out, and there remained but thirty when the promised goal was gained. Thirty exhausted, wretched, broken things, with hopeless hearts and trailing wings. Time passed. Then from the highest court there flew a herald of the starry retinue who saw the thirty birds, trembling, afraid, their bodies broken. The herald said, What city are you from? What race? What business brings you to this distant place? What are your names? You seem destroyed by fear. What made you leave your homes and travel here? What were you in the world? What use are you? What can so weak and clumsy creatures do? The group replied, We flew here for the king. We come as suppliants, and we have sought through grievous paths the threshold of his court. How long the way was to complete our vow? Of thousands, we are only thirty now. Was that hope false which led us to this place? Or shall we now behold our sovereign's face? The herald said, The blaze of majesty reduces souls to unreality. And if your souls are burned, then all the pain that you have suffered will have been in vain. They answered him, How can a moth flee fire when fire contains its ultimate desire? If we don't join him, yet we'll burn. And it is this for which our spirits yearn. It is not union for which we hope. We know that goal remains beyond our scope. We know we could not penetrate the flame. Simply to reach it is our humble aim. Though grief engulfed the wrecked group, love made the birds impetuous and unafraid. The herald's self-possession was unmoved, but their resilience was not reproved. Gently, he unlocked the guarded door. A hundred veils drew back, and there before the birds' incredulous, bewildered sight, shone the unveiled, 
the inmost light of light. He led them to a noble throne, a place of intimacy, dignity and grace. Then gave them all a written page and said that when its contents had been truly read, the meaning that their journey had concealed and of the stage that reached would be revealed. The thirty birds read through the fateful page. They discovered, stage by detailed stage, their lives, their actions set out one by one, all that their souls had ever been or done. Their souls rose free of all they'd been before. The past and all its actions were no more. Their life came from that close, insistent sun, and in its vivid rays, they shone as one. Silently their shining Lord replies, I am a mirror set before your eyes, and all who come before your eyes, and all who come before my splendor see, Yourselves, your own unique reality. You came as thirty birds, and therefore saw these selfsame thirty birds, not less nor more. If you had come as forty fifty here, an answering forty fifty would appear. How much you thought you knew and saw. But you now know that all you trusted was untrue. With all the dangers that the journey brought, the journey was in me. You slept secure in being's inmost shrine. Truth's lost, flawless jewel, delight in which you will be lost to mortal sight, dispersed to nothingness, until once more you find in me the selves you were before. As they listened to the Zimorg's words, a trembling dissolution filled the birds. The substance of their being was undone, and they were lost like shade before the sun. The edge of the word approached. Neither the path, the pilgrims, nor their guide remained.